Aneurysms, pseudoaneurysms, and hematomas are relatively common complications of arteriovenous fistulas and grafts. Their symptoms include an externally visible outflow vein dilation and an arm mass which will be pulsatile in the case of an aneurysm or pseudoaneurysm. They can also cause infection and pain, and the skin over the area may be thin and shiny or ulcerated. Aneurysms will appear as focal dilations of the outflow vein wall. They form as blood flow through the vessel increases, and repeated needle punctures weaken the outflow vessel walls. Aneurysms are frequently seen with arteriovenous fistulas, and less commonly with arteriovenous grafts. In fact, up to around 60% of patients with fistulas and grafts will experience an aneurysm. There have been proposals that aneurysms should be classified as dilations greater than 2 centimeters. However, there is no standardization of what measurement classifies as an aneurysm. In lower extremity and abdominal vessels, a 1.5 times or greater increase in diameter between a uniform segment just proximal to the dilation and the dilation itself defines an aneurysm. There is no such criteria that has been applied to fistulas. This may be partly because diameter varies so much just within a normal outflow vein. Smaller aneurysms that are not quickly growing pose little risk and can be monitored over time. Rapidly growing aneurysms can be dangerous, however, because as the vessel wall stretches and thins, there is risk of the vein walls rupturing. This would be dangerous due to the high-pressure blood flow within the vein. On ultrasound, aneurysms are measured in transverse and then confirmed in longitudinal view. They will usually appear circular in transverse view, as seen with the aneurysm in this image. Any thrombus within the aneurysm, such as the one shown here, should be noted, as that can expand to block fistula flow. Thrombus also increases the risk of aneurysm rupture. Measure the diameter of the aneurysm vertically. It can also be useful to measure length and width of the patent part of the vessel, meaning the area not blocked by thrombus. A pseudoaneurysm occurs as a leak of blood through the outflow vein wall, usually after routine puncture by a dialysis needle, especially in spots frequently used for cannulation. The leaking blood collects in the arm tissue. While 10% of fistula patients will experience a pseudoaneurysm, they are more common in grafts. Pseudoaneurysms have a similar appearance to aneurysms on ultrasound and will also look round, possibly with thrombus. The difference is that pseudoaneurysms are located outside the vessel walls in the tissue, while aneurysms are ballooning of the vessel walls without rupture into the outside tissue. Pseudoaneurysms are dangerous when they grow large enough to compress the fistula, as this can lead to stenosis and occlusion. Another danger is when the neck of the pseudoaneurysm, which is the connection to the outflow vein, widens to help the pseudoaneurysm expand, as this can cause increased compression of the outflow vessel. On color ultrasound, pseudoaneurysms have a classic yin-yang sign due to the swirling blood flow within the collection. In this image of a pseudoaneurysm, you can see both blue and red areas as the blood is swirling in opposite directions. Sometimes you can see the neck or trail of blood leading from the outflow vein to the blood collection in the tissue. This 2D video shows the slow-moving blood cell swirling within the pseudoaneurysm, which creates the yin-yang sign when color is applied. You can also see the two fro of the cells in the neck on the bottom right. This image shows a pseudoaneurysm with thrombus in 2D on the left and then in color on the right where you can see the yin-yang sign. On Doppler ultrasound, pseudoaneurysms often demonstrate a two fro waveform, like in this image where the flow alternates above and below the baseline. Like the yin-yang sign, this is again due to the blood flow moving in opposite directions. These images show another example of a pseudoaneurysm two-fro waveform along with the yin-yang sign. However, note that not all fistula pseudoaneurysms will have two-fro waveforms, although it is characteristic. There may commonly be a less exaggerated two-fro waveform instead, like this example where there is more antegrade flow above the baseline. Treatment of pseudoaneurysms usually involves an ultrasound-guided injection of thrombin, which induces clotting of the blood collecting in the tissue. When a pseudoaneurysm is clotted off, either naturally or with thrombin, the coagulated collection of blood in the tissue is called a hematoma. On ultrasound, the hematoma will appear black or gray and will show no color, indicating no further active blood flow, as seen in this image. The hematoma usually resolves on its own over time. 
surgical treatment for aneurysms and pseudoaneurysms can be tricky. For both, a stent graft can be inserted into the outflow vein at the affected portion. This stent blocks blood flow from the vein into the aneurysm or pseudoaneurysm, preventing them from expanding. Unfortunately, stent grafts can get in the way of cannulation and are not ideal for fistulas. This is an ultrasound image of a stent graft in transverse view. The stent excludes or cuts off blood flow to the surrounding aneurysm, leading it to thrombose around the graft. You can see the thrombosed aneurysm appearing as gray tones in this image. Another option is surgical excision of the outflow vein portion that contains the aneurysm or pseudoaneurysm, and then construction of a new fistula. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.